Hello, and welcome to Linux Action News, episode 283, recorded on March 7th, 2023. I'm Chris. And I'm Wes. Hello, Wes. Let's do the news. Deutsche Telekom is a sizable German telecommunications company headquartered in Bonn. It operates several subsidiaries worldwide, including the mobile communications brand headquartered in our backyard, T-Mobile. This week, it announced that it's now offering NextCloud Office to its customers. And it's millions of customers at that. So NextCloud Office is a software-as-a-service office suite that is accessible by, you guessed it, your web browser. In short, it's based on Collabora Online, which is basically based on LibreOffice, and means it's super compatible and should be a solid replacement for all but the highest-end Microsoft Office and maybe Google Docs user. And this could be a great option in the EU, because it'll be hosted on Deutsche Telekom's Open Telecom Cloud, which in turn means it follows the EU's GDPR. Combining that with NextCloud Office's open source code, well, one could see this combination really appealing to the privacy-minded. This has got to be an exciting get for the NextCloud team, and I think it's also exciting for those of us that have been following NextCloud since it was own cloud. Um, this is a huge deployment, and maybe it's becoming standard fare to see free software projects get deployed at scale like this, but I think it's still worth taking a moment and appreciating it. And also, the trend is NextCloud's friend. Hosted office solutions that are compliant with the local laws that your business has to deal with These are getting more popular than ever. But Wes, I wanted to pose a question to you uh, because I think some of our listeners have got to be thinking this. Like, isn't the whole point of NextCloud and one of the best things about it that these users are going to be missing out on is that you can have it on-premises, on your land, fully self-hosted? Look, that's that's a wonderful perk of NextCloud, but I I don't know. I, I think it's a net win to see more hosted offerings of open source solutions because... Yes, self-hosting NextCloud for us, you know, for JB, for many in the audience, even sometimes, you know, for friends and family, works really well. But not everyone who might want to get away from the spine eyes of Google is really up for self-hosting, I think. And, okay, you are giving up some things if you're allowing another organization to run something like Notes for you. But if you got a little more offerings, if you know that the code they're running on the back end is the same that you could run, Well, that's a little more trust, and you retain the options having experienced the software, being exposed to it. You can go move on-prem if and when you're able. Gnome Shell and Mutter 44 have reached their release candidate milestone ahead of the official release in just two weeks, all going to plan. And to our surprise, there have been several last-minute additions. What really stands out to me the most in these recent patches is that it looks like GTK3 has been totally worked out of both the shell and mutter, meaning both are now fully GTK4, which is just very impressive. Yeah, both from just a time standpoint, but also from a performance standpoint. That's that's fantastic. And, you know, I'm I'm really impressed. I, I thought that would take a few more release cycles. I have to say also... Something else I thought would take a little longer is the Wayland Fractional Scaling version 1 protocol is making it into GNOME 44. I'd come to terms with the idea that we just would have to wait another cycle. You know, we actually talked about that recently in the context of KDE Plasma adding support for this new protocol. Right. Uh, Okay, so for those of you who don't remember, the Fractional Scale V1 protocol is used for communicating the preferred fractional scales to surfaces which in combination with WP Viewport That can be used to render your screen at a fractional scale when applicable. Now, besides all that Wayland goodness, we also saw some legacy OpenGL driver code cleaned up, several quality of life improvements, and the usual regression fixes. All of that in just this last development cycle. Sadly, though, what did not make it in for this release was the triple buffering optimization work we've mentioned led by Canonical. Yeah, if that rings a bell, that's because it's something that GNOME users have been waiting for for about two years, and it really would have been the cherry on the top for this release. When it does finally get patched in, you can expect low latency in the UI and reduced CPU usage. But the reality is, 
honestly, we've learned these things just take more time and effort than you might have initially expected. But outside of that, there's a lot of things going on and a lot more features in GNOME. I'm sorry, GNOME 44. And it looks like it's going to be in great shape and another worthwhile upgrade. You know, the moment it's out, we'll be upgrading our systems and we'll have coverage right here on the show when it lands. A quick update from the Asahi Linux team. It sounds like they might be one of the first projects to actually take advantage of Rust in the kernel. Writing recently, quote, Now that Rust itself is upstream, I'd like to get all the abstractions upstreamed so we can actually get the driver upstreamed. This is how it begins. Something that the community is interested in written in Rust is what really moves this forward. Uh, They went on to say in that announcement, quote, This is a fairly complete driver for Apple AGX G13 and G14 series GPUs. And the driver today supports the Apple M1, the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, the M1 Ultra, and the M2 system on a chips across two firmware revisions each. And while the driver doesn't sound fully finished by any means, it does sound like writing the driver in Rust has provided some benefits. Quote, While developing the driver, I tried to make use of Rust safety and lifetime features to provide not just CPU side safety, but also partial firmware ABI safety. Thanks to this, it has turned out to be a very stable driver, even though the GPU firmware crashes are fatal. No restart capability, need to reboot. And the firmware driver interface is a huge mess of unsafe shared memory structures with complex pointer chains. Oh man, well, all right, that sounds about perfect. Yeah, I I think they're actually saying it's ready for production here in the studio. Linode.com slash LAN. Go there to get $100 in 60-day credit on a new account and support the show. Linode offers fast, reliable cloud hosting with real human support that's 30 to 50% cheaper than the hyperscalers with their crazy platforms. And Linode has great features like object storage is S3 compatible, cloud firewall that stops the traffic before it gets to your rig, and backups that are easy to understand and simple to restore. And you can choose from 11 data centers and try it for yourself. Linode.com slash LAN. We use it, we love it, and you will too. Get the $100 and try it for yourself. Support the show at linode.com slash LAN. And thanks to Collide. Collide Collide.com slash LAN. Collide can help Okta users achieve 100% fleet compliance. If a device isn't compliant, the user can't log in to your cloud applications until they fixed the problem. Collide Solution ensures device compliance as part of authentication, which reduces support tickets and IT frustration while ensuring 100% compliance. Learn more or book a demo at collide.com slash LAN. We've been watching Flathub, you know, the place to find applications packaged for Linux desktop in Flatpak, develop slowly but steadily into a quintessential spot to find and install Linux apps, regardless of your distribution, for years. And this week, we get a significant update on their plans for 2023 from Robert McQueen of Endless. Rob starts with some data, writing, quote, Flathub is going strong. We offer 2,000 apps from over 1,500 collaborators on GitHub. We're averaging 700,000 app downloads a day with 898 million HTTP requests, totaling 88.3 terabytes served by our CDN each day. 88.3 terabytes a day. Wow, I wonder if they can time travel with numbers like that. Rob also knows that Flathub has been developing new features for a bit now, such as accounts for users and developers, payment processing via Stripe, and app verification and authentication. He also touches on the back-end kind of people infrastructure stuff that's been happening for Flathub. He acknowledges that the GNOME Foundation has acted as the incubator and legal host for Flathub until now. But he writes that Flathub plans to establish an independent legal entity to reduce risk and provide flexibility in the future. You really get the sense that behind the scenes, an impressive amount of work has been going on to get Flathub 
to this point. It appears even Vlad Hub's governance is getting a remake. Rob writes, We've been working on a governance model that ensures that there's transparency and trust in who is making decisions and why. Going on to say, We don't want to get held up here, creating something complex with memberships and elections. So at first, we're going to come up with a simple, balanced way to appoint people into a board that makes key decisions about Flat Hub and iterate from there. I think that's the reasonable approach, because when you stop and think about what they are trying to build, an app store for all Linux distributions and developers, that's, that's incredibly ambitious. And they really have to get all their ducks in a row. But I kind of feel like they're uniquely positioned to take this monster task on. And from what I understand here, they got a pretty solid plan for 2023. Launch the new FlatHub web experience and verification features. Turn on the Flatpak repo subsets. Create the FlatHub focus groups to hear from app creators, distribution makers, and, of course, Linux users. And then iterate on their feedback. Now, work does still need to be done on the new FlatHub website. They'll be taking a phased deployment approach there. But then they can fully launch the verification features and so on. Yeah, each piece obviously needs to have its dependencies completed first, but that verification stuff, I mean, that's just, that's one area I have some questions about. So we've invited Rob on Linux Unplugged for episode 501, and we just want to get clarification on that and a couple other items. But, you know, something else that Rob touched on that isn't really like people structure related, but more like FlatHub cool features related, direct uploads. In fact, Rob writes, quote, direct app uploads are close to ready. And they enable exciting stuff like allowing Electron apps to be built outside of Flatpak Builder or driving automatic FlatHub uploads from GitHub Actions or GitLab CI flows. It sounds like there's some more work needed there as well. And perhaps I'm thinking about how to best encourage that this new tooling actually get used. The post has more details if you're curious. And of course, we'll have it linked in the show notes. I can really see direct uploads becoming a popular option, if done correctly anyway. There's a lot to unpack, but they seem to be thinking it through. I agree. Um, Maybe I'm missing something here, but I think they might have just cracked this. Time will tell, of course. So listeners, if uh, you have any questions for Robert McQueen, you can boost them in or mail them in, and I might just ask them to the man with the plan directly. (laughs) But... You know we'll keep an eye on this, and we'll report back when any major developments happen in this and everything else in the world of Linux and open source. So don't miss a single episode of Linux Action News. Go to linuxactionnews.com slash subscribe for all the ways to get new episodes. And linuxactionnews.com slash contact to let us know about your favorite app on FlatHub. The Coda Robe is entering limited availability. If you want to grab one, you can grab it or the Tactical Tumblr at the Jupiter Garage. Just go to jupitergarage.com. As for us, well, we'll be back next week with our take on the latest Linux and open source news. Thanks for joining us. And that's all the news for this week. <laughs>